I want to welcome each one of you, my brothers and sisters, for our weekly Bible study. This is on the 8th Sabbath school lesson. God has been gracious to us, brought us to another uh, day so that uh, we can study God's word. Let's pray before we begin. Loving Father, we want to thank you so much for your abundant love and goodness towards each one of us. Lord, we want you to teach us these deeper truths in this uh, chapter so that we will come closer to you. Lord, there are so many symbols to understand. We want your blessing upon us so that uh, by the help of the Holy Spirit, we will be able to understand these symbols and apply them to our life. And bless all of those who are watching and also sharing with others. Thank you, Lord, because we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we are uh, doing the seventh chapter Daniel chapter 7 this is the eighth lesson I know uh, the title is from the stormy sea to the heavenly clouds surely now we want to learn some of the <coughs> some of the <coughs> truths in this uh, chapter the events in this chapter were revealed to Daniel in the first year of Belshazzar, in the first year of Belshazzar, Daniel chapter 7 verse 1, Daniel had a dream. So God revealed those uh, details. Now, according to many historians, the first year of Belshazzar was 553 BC, 553 BC. But this chapter is also in Aramaic language, the Babylonian language. This is the last chapter now in Aramaic language. Next chapter is going to be now again Hebrew language. Now this chapter is uh, now having only now short uh, history, but it covers something like 3,500 years of history because Daniel saw this vision in 553 BC then it is covering up to this uh, now uh, 2000 uh, uh, years after Christ before Christ that was uh, another uh, 500 years roughly and also after second coming the millennium another thousand years so 2000 years after Christ then after second coming a thousand years that is 3,000 years, then uh, all God's people are going to rule with Him forever. So that's why uh, now in English we say uh, all of these uh, uh, major events which are covering over 3,500 years of history in this chapter from the time of Daniel and from the time of King Belshazzar up to kingdom is given to the saints. Now, but it is given in only a small outline form. All the verses are only about 27 in this chapter. So that's why surely God is uh, now, God has given all the long history of 3,500 years, just like an outline. Suppose if you read a thick book, you will see outline only one page. But book is uh, several hundred pages. Likewise, all of this history is covered in about 27 verses only. Now, if there's someone to read for us the memory text, this is found in Daniel chapter 7 verse 27. Daniel chapter 7 verse 27. This is our memory text or the key text. Is there someone to help us? And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey Him. Now I want you to see, God's kingdom is forever. Unlike the other kingdoms, who, which came on the scene of the history for a short while or for a few hundred years, then they disappeared. But God's kingdom is going to continue forever. Then it also said, God's kingdom shall be given. It's going to be in the future. 
See? Now, that's why uh, we will come to those uh, details. Now, in this chapter, we need to focus on now the stormy sea. Daniel, the now God showed Daniel a stormy sea. I know uh, uh, many times if you notice the sea, especially those who are living in the coastal areas, they can notice uh, sea is sometimes calm. But when whenever there is a storm, whenever there is a deep depression, then the sea is very rough with the big waves, so much of noise, the sound. So the uh, sea is very rough. Daniel saw something like that. But now, this is an apocalyptic literature that is a symbolic language. What does the sea represent in a... Uh, apocalyptic prophecies, especially book of Daniel and book of Revelation. We are told in Revelation chapter 17 verse 15 saying John the waters, that is the sea waters which you saw representing many people and many nations. That's why that stormy sea which Daniel saw representing thickly populated areas, many people, many nations but uh, it is so stormy, rough, which uh, indicates to us that now contending for positions, contending for land, fighting for uh, power, this is what it is. Then Daniel now saw four wild animals coming out. Four wild animals. So, sea represents people and many nations. Then the four wild animals. But these are not common animals. These are uncommon animals, symbolic animals. For example, now Daniel saw the first animal was lion, lion with wings. Do we have anywhere lion with wings? Not at all. This is not common one, uncommon. No wings for lion anywhere in the world. I suppose if a lion has wings, then you can see what is going to happen. That will be now frightening situation for any uh, inhabitants in anywhere. If lion comes flying, how to control? How can we escape? So this is not common animal. But it is representing something. But Daniel did not understand what are these wild animals representing, which he saw in the vision. Then angel gave the explanation, angel Gabriel. Daniel chapter 7 verse 17, Daniel 7 17, angel said, Daniel, the four animals which you saw, the four beasts which you saw are four kings heading four kingdoms. If there is a king, there should be a kingdom. If there is a kingdom, there should be a king. Both cannot be separated, king and kingdom. I know uh, there are many parents who would like to call their son king. And uh, they call uh, Raja, Raja. Okay, now I know there are uh, many uh, people, young as well as old, by the name uh, that uh, King Raj, or Raja, or Raj Kumar, something of that nature. But uh, here in the olden days, when it is mentioned about King, King always had a kingdom. And when there is a kingdom, always there was a king. So, they are inseparable. They are like the two sides of the same coin, king and the kingdom. So, four animals, four kings, four kingdoms. Now, what are those four kingdoms? Lion, now, is the favorite animal uh, of King Nebuchadnezzar. That's why uh, the archaeologists found many pictures of uh, lions with wings on the walls of Babylon, in uh, some of those palaces, they had lion with wings. So no wonder God showed lion with wings to Daniel, representing Babylon. On top of that, if you read Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 7, God said, the lion is coming out of the thicket. The lion is coming out of that thicket, that bush from the north referring to Babylon. So Babylon is referred as a lion with wings. Surely Nebuchadnezzar now within a short time 
he conquered the whole world because wings means uh, symbol of flying so fast like that very fast within a short time he conquered the whole world and Nebuchadnezzar started in uh, 605 BC 605 BC and Babylonian kingdom continued up to 539 BC and but uh, we are told Daniel saw the wings of that line cut off or broken so no wings to fly now and that was the situation we have to apply during the time of his madness for seven years and Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar was reduced to an animal almost like eating grass like an animal so that was his humbling experience which symbolizes his uh, wings are cut off then after that experience a mad hat was given before that uh, madness for seven years and uh, Nebuchadnezzar behaved like almost like a animal like a lion but after this uh, experience he was converted he became a follower of the true God and symbolically it is said a man's heart was given to the lion sure it happened in the life of uh, Nebuchadnezzar so after him for a short while his uh, sons ruled uh, Emil Marduk and other then finally uh, his grandson Belshazzar then Babylonian kingdom came to an end in 539 BC Medes and Persians together as a coalition government they defeated and they took over and the second animal Daniel saw second animal was a bear and bear is one side low another side is high this is what in English we call lopsided down and uh, it has uh, uh, three ribs in his mouth that means it is eating up the flesh and the bones three ribs are left three ribs are in his mouth and it is chewing what are those three ribs uh, representing uh, the three ribs representing three big nations in those days whom Medes and Persians defeated big nations one was Egypt very big nation and a powerful nation with a big army they defeated Babylon is uh, Medo Persians defeated then one is G Egypt second one is Lydia also a very big and a strong nation third one is Babylon they defeated Babylon also impossible to enter into Babylon city and defeat but they defeated so three ribs representing in the mouth of the bear uh, now Egypt Lydia and Babylon one side is low another side is high representing this is the coalition government Medes are very small uh, group and small army but they joined with a, a big uh, uh, nation big army strong army Persians Persians are always strong Persian king was Cyrus in the beginning Medes uh, king was uh, Darius the Mede so both joined together that's why the stronger uh, partner or alliance partner is uh, shown as the higher side the small supporting Medes uh, now represented the lower side then uh, Medes and Persians ruled from 539 to 331 BC after that the third animal third animal was a, a leopard but leopard with uh, four uh, wings and, and also it had four heads now again this is uncommon we don't have anywhere any leopard any animal with four heads this is only symbolic this uh, uh, third empire which ruled the whole world was Greece and uh, Greek kingdom established and made it as a worldwide kingdom by King, Nebuchad uh, King uh, Alexander the Great King Alexander the Great is the one which made Greece as the worldwide uh, empire to rule the whole world but it had wings leopard had wings on the back representing now it's like a uh, like a big bird flying uh, fast like that Alexander the Great within a short time within a few years and uh, now less than 15 years he defeated the whole world up to India all the way from Greece Macedonia he started he came up to India uh, that is uh, now in those days 
uh, where there is uh, no modern transportation like aeroplanes and uh, helicopters and he could cover this much area uh, with the horses. So Alexander the Great but only at the age of 33, at the age of only 33, he died, sudden death. But he had a big and huge kingdom from uh, Greece up to India. Then his four army generals now divided the kingdom. Four army generals' names are now, now Ptolemy, Seleucus, Lysimachus, and Cassander. Four. So these four generals divided his uh, big kingdom. So that's why symbolically the symbol is used. The leopard having four heads. This is the symbol. Now, Greece ruled from 331 a, uh, BC, 331 BC up to 168 BC. Then the fourth uh, animal, fourth animal was a, a, a terrible one, frightening one. It had iron teeth. It had iron teeth and destroying anyone and everyone. And it had ten horns on the head. Now, there, there is no animal anywhere in the world with iron teeth. But it's symbolically showing iron teeth, which means it can bite anyone, it can chew anything, it can destroy anything. The cruel nature. And uh, this was, you remember, uh, in chapter 2, uh, that uh, image, that statue had legs of iron. That is Rome. That's why, uh, so, it is pointing to the Rome. The fourth animal is Rome. And uh, now, uh, these ten horns, on the head of this fourth animal, that is Rome. Rome ruled from 168 BC up to 476 AD. It ruled for 644 years, 644 years. <coughs> then, that uh, ten, king, uh, ten horns representing ten kings. Again, it is angel who told. Daniel chapter 7 verse 24. Daniel, the ten horns which you saw or ten kings with ten kingdoms. Then we want to make a comparison. In the cha chapter 2 that uh, image, that statue also had the same uh, kingdoms but different symbols. There the metals like a head of gold, Babylon, chest of silver, Medes and Persians, then belly of brass, Greece, legs, uh, two legs of iron, uh, uh, Rome. Then the feet and the ten toes are uh, ten divided kingdoms of Europe. But in chapter 7, now the same uh, symbol is not used. The metals are not used. But here, the same uh, political powers, but represented by animals, wild animals. And why wild animals are used as symbols? It shows their wildness. It shows their cruelty. How cruel each kingdom was. These are all uh, not uh, sacrificial animals, but these, these are all unclean animals. So these are all uh, heathen nations. Then Daniel also noticed a little horn came up. Daniel chapter 7 was uh, 7 and 8, especially 8. That little horn had eyes like uh, human beings, mouth like human being to speak great words. And it spoke great words, pompous words, or uh, uh, blasphemous words. Blasphemous words. Then, who is this little horn? And when the little horn came up, three horns were broken down out of these ten. Then, what are those broken horns? The broken horns are, one is uh, Haroli, one is uh, Vandals, Second one is Vandals. Third one is Ostrogoths. So, Vandals, Ostrogoths and Haroli. Three horns or three tribal kingdoms which uh, troubled the city of Rome, which attacked Rome, finally eliminated. Finally eliminated. Now, when uh, they were uh, plucked out, when papacy started ruling. So, that little horn most of the Protestant uh, historians, Protestant theologians identify this little horn as papacy. Way back in the 
uh, olden days that uh, Little Horn was identified as uh, Pope and Papacy. The first one to identify was John Wycliffe. Professor John Wycliffe, a professor at uh, Oxford University in those days. This was in uh, uh, 1382. He identified Little Horn as Papacy. Later, Martin Luther continued that uh, explanation, that interpretation after his conversion. Then Zwingli, another reformer, uh, he continued that one, Zwingli. And uh, uh, he's from uh, also a Great Reformation. And uh, he continued that one. Then another uh, great reformer, John Calvin. He also continued the same interpretation by saying, Little Horn is papacy. So that's why we are following a historical identification of Little Horn as papacy. What did the papacy do? And Revelation, uh, Daniel chapter 7 verse 25. Revelation chapter 7 verse 25 says, It spoke blasphemous words. What are the blasphemous words? Papacy said. Now, uh, papacy is infallible. There is no fault, no sin in Pope. Secondly, they said, Pope has the power. Till today they say, Pope has the power to forgive anybody's sin. And also they say, Pope has power to send anybody to heaven or hell. And so, these are the blasphemous things. Because only God has those that power. But uh, papacy claimed all of these powers which king or God only can have. Secondly, what this little horn, that papacy, identified as papacy did is, wearing out the saints of the most, persecuting the saints. It was a persecuting power. For example, John Huss and Jerome, they were burnt alive to death because they read the Bible and preaching to the people. And they have killed so many God's people who read the Bible and who are keeping the commandments. Like Waldenses and all, they killed. How many people killed? According to uh, many Protestant historians' estimation, it must be something like 10 to 15 crores, 10 to 15 crores, something like 100 to 150 million, if you want to count in millions. 10 to 15 crores of uh, God's people were killed. Not in one day, not in one year, during their duration, during their domination of 1260 years. So that's why this little horn, nobody did like this one. Only Papacy did that. Nobody did like this. Nobody uh, killed this many God's people. There were so many heathen kingdoms and heathen kings. Nobody killed this many God's people. Only so-called Christian power. Papacy killed this many people. Because many Christians read the Bible, many Christians refused to worship idols. They introduced idol worship like Mary, Jesus' idol, and uh, uh, John's idol, Peter's idol, Paul's idol. They introduced many. And since Christians refused to worship them, they persecuted them and killed them mercilessly. And also, time was given to them, this little horn. A time, times, and half a time, or dividing up a time. Now, uh, the uh, Aramaic word is Ida. Ida means one year. They should have translated one year, two years, and half year. They should have translated that way. But somehow they translated time, times, time means two, two times, then half a time or dividing of the time. So which means if you put everything, time means one year, times means two years, one plus two is three, then dividing of the time or half a time means half a year. Altogether, three and a half years. If you convert that one into days, in the Bible calendar there are only 360 days, 360 days, 360, 360 days in a year. Which means three and a half uh, years means it comes to 1260 days. But one day is equal to, should not be taken as literal day, one day is equal to one year. Now on the basis of uh, Numbers uh, chapter 14 verse uh, 34, Numbers 14, 34, God changed, God changed 40 days of their journey uh, to reach uh, Canaan into 40 years to roam in the wilderness because of their uh, unfaithfulness and disobedience. So God changed 40 days into 40 years. That's why 1260 days is equal to 1260 years. 
So in the apocalyptic uh, prophecies like the uh, book of Daniel and book of Revelation, we need to understand that 40, uh, one day is equal to one year. This is what we call year day principle. So 1260 years. What is the starting point of 1260 years? 538 AD. What happened in 538 AD? There was an emperor, Roman emperor called Justinian. He gave the political power to Pope. Pope at that time was Vigilius. Vigilius was the Pope in 538 AD. That's the starting point. In this 1260 years, they did terrible things. Destroying so many God's people, as we said, 10 to 15 crores. Then this uh, uh, time of 1260 years of domination of papacy ended in 1798 when Pope was arrested, Pope Pius VI was arrested by one of the commanders of uh, now Napoleon. The commander's name was uh, Bertier, Bertier in 1798 and arrested the Pope, Pope Pius VI and put him in, took him to France and put him in the jail, he died. So that ends the time given to this little horn. And also little horn was uh, having another uh, uh, work to do, that is, it changes the commandment, law. What law they change? Out of ten commandments, they removed the second commandment, papacy removed. What is that uh, ten, uh, second commandment? Second commandment says, thou shalt not make, you should not make any images. In order to introduce the image of Mary, that idol of Mary, idol of Jesus and all, they removed the second commandment from the ten commandments. Then how it will become, then only nine commandments are left now. In order to make it up ten number, they split that last commandment, the tenth commandment is a little big one. They split that one into two pieces. So they made it ten. And also they changed the day of worship from Sabbath to Sunday. So all of this happened with the power and influence of papacy. That's why Little Horn is terrible. Little Horn is terrible. And it spoke uh, that uh, blasphemous or uh, boastful words against the Most High God. This is what Daniel noticed in Daniel chapter 7 verse 8 about the Little Horn and Daniel chapter 7 verse 25. But now Daniel was looking in his vision what God is going to do. How God is going to react to this little horn? What God is going to do? Because it has destroyed so many God's people and uh, the papacy spoke that little horn, uh, spoke uh, many uh, very blasphemous words, proud words against the Most High God. And uh, what God is going to do? Then Daniel could notice a judgment scene in heaven. Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. I know to explain all of these events in this chapter, the judgment alone will take more than 2-3 hours. Likewise, what all the little horn has done, if you show all the historical proof, that itself will take us at least 2 hours. And other things. So, the material which is available on chapter 7, we can continue for at least 7-8 hours presentation. I know in the classroom, uh, now we take at least two weeks to explain to our students when they study book of Daniel. I do that. It takes at least minimum two weeks to cover Daniel chapter 7. Sometimes it's two weeks also not enough. But now just we are uh, touching some of the highlights, that's all. That's why this judgment which Daniel noticed, what God is going to do, how God is going to react to the terrible things done by the fourth uh, animal and the little horn. Then Daniel saw judgment and the thrones were set. Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. Ancient of the days came and said, Ancient of the days means that is God the Father. He is not old. Ancient of the days means he was there from the eternity to eternity. That's why, that's how we have to translate. I know uh, in Telugu language it is translated as uh, old man, Ruddudu. It's not right. It's wrong. And uh, it should be God who is there for eternity to, from eternity to eternity. Then uh, thousands and thousands and thousands ministered unto him. They are angels. That expression thousands and thousands and ten thousand, ten thousand, you only used in the Bible for angels. For example, Daniel chapter, or Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5 was uh, 11 onwards. This thousands and thousands expression used for angels. Then books were opened. What are the books? Book of Life, Book of Remembrance, 
another book which is called Book of Death. There in heaven, what all we are doing, good as well as bad, whether we do daytime or nighttime, even our thoughts are recorded, like video, not like uh, writing with pen or pencil, but like a video. We can understand this uh, modern technology. Maybe the previous generation did not understand what is this uh, writing. Maybe they thought only angels are writing uh, on a book like uh, with uh, some pen or pencil. But now we can understand angels are recording all that what we are doing, uh, daytime or nighttime, secretly or openly. Thoughts are also recorded. They're all open. And into this judgment, Daniel chapter 7 verse 13, one like the Son of Man was brought. Son of Man is Jesus. Jesus also came from the, into the judgment. Then, what was the result of the judgment? What did they do? Because Daniel's focus is, what God is going to do to this uh, fourth kingdom or fourth animal which had iron teeth to uh, bite people and uh, uh, chew people. And also that little horn which spoke uh, uh, very uh, proud words against the Most High God and persecuted so many of saints of God. What God is going to do? Then they gave the judgment. And the, in the judgment, they burnt in fire the fourth animal which did terrible things to God's people. Because Rome, it is Roman government which gave permission the Roman uh, uh, governor, Pilate, to crucify Jesus. It was uh, the Roman uh, king, Domitian, who gave uh, permission to put John into boiling oil. The later, it was uh, that king, Roman king, who sentenced John to be in the island of Patmos to suffer. And it is a Roman government or Roman king, Nero, who crucified uh, Peter upside down. It was that same Nero who beheaded Paul. Many people. So Roman government was terrible government. And Roman government introduced the death punishment by cross, crucifixion, which was more cruel and painful death punishment ever invented by human beings was crucifixion. That's why God is going to punish. And that's why fourth animal, that is Rome, Roman uh, Empire, was cast into the fire and destroyed. This is symbolically. Which means anyone who is not obeying God and His commandments, they will be destroyed in the final analysis by fire. This is what we call hellfire sometime. Then Daniel also was noticing, what's going to happen to the little horn? And that also was cast into the fire. So what we learn out of this, anyone who is not following God and His truth and His commandments, they will be punished finally in the fire. They will be burnt and they will become ash. They will be reduced to ashes. This is what is going to happen. And this is what Daniel saw. Then Daniel also noticed, then what happened to God's people who suffered so much, who died so many uh, people were persecuted to death, burnt alive and all. What happened to them? And it says in Daniel chapter 7 verse 14, Kingdom is given to the saints. Daniel chapter 7 verse 26 and 27. Kingdom is, gi is given to the saints. Kingdom is given to the saints. Which means God's people. God's people. From the time of, let us say, Abel who was killed by his own brother. All the other God's faithful people who received persecution, who went through suffering, who uh, had a terrible life and terrible death, painful death. Now, they are going to be with the God, rule with God forever. Because we are told in Revelation chapter 1 verse 6, Revelation chapter 1 verse 6, God is making us as kings and the priests. Because Jesus is king of kings and lord of lords to rule the whole uh, universe. In this universe, so many worlds. We are going to rule... Uh, uh, Jesus is going to rule as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We, the children of uh, Jesus, like sons, so we are prince, prince. and uh, daughters, princess. So we are going to rule with Christ forever and ever and ever. This is what we are told in Revelation 22 verse 5, the last part. Revelation 22 five, uh, verse 5, the last part says, we will rule with him forever. I know, Many of us go through suffering on this earth. Some sickness, some pain, uh, some uh, bad experiences, uh, some uh, people are tortured by their own uh, colleagues and own church members. 
but the time is coming. Those people who suffer for Christ, who become martyrs for Christ, they are going to rule with Christ and they are going to stand close to the throne. In Revelation chapter 7 verse 13 and 14, 13 verse, uh, Revelation 7, 13, uh, one, of the seven, uh, one of the 24 elders, one of the 24 elders asked this question to John the Revelator. John, who are these people dressed in white color dress and uh, standing close to the throne? Who are these? John said, Sir, I don't know. You tell me. Then the same elder who asked this question, one of the 24 elders said, John, these are the people who washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb and made them white. That's why they have the privilege to stand in white dress close to the throne. Close to the throne. Which means those who suffer for Christ on this earth, they have a great reward. We are told in uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse uh, 9 and 10, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. This is the kingdom of heaven. My brothers and sisters, are you suffering for Christ? Are you suffering because you have you become a Christian? Are you suffering because you are following the commandments? Are you suffering because you are following the Bible? Are you suffering because uh, you have accepted Christ and taken baptism? I know sometimes some families now they say, now you cannot come into our house anymore because you became a Christian. And uh, so they have to be on the road. I know there are many people who suffer even in now in these last days because they have accepted Christ from some heathen family. God be with you. God bless you. And hold on your faith and uh, have your uh, tolerance and uh, depend on Christ. Then this life is for a short time. This suffering is only for a short time. Jesus is coming. We will be with him forever in heaven. No more death, no more suffering, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more old age, no more sickness. We will rule with Christ forever. That's why we read in that memory text, Daniel chapter 7 verse 27. Kingdom is given to the saints and the dominion is given to the saints. They rule with God forever and God's dominion, that means God's ruling is forever and ever. No ending. That uh, kingdom which ruled the longest on this earth was Rome. 644 years they ruled. But where, where is Rome today? Yeah, there is a city called Rome by the same name, the same city. But Rome is not uh, ruling the whole world anymore. But God's kingdom is going to be there forever. That's why symbolically in chapter 2, that stone which uh, hit and broke and made the uh, whole statue into powder, that stone which was cut without hand, grew and uh, occupied the whole earth and be became like a big mountain which means uh, Christ's kingdom will be there forever. That's why my brothers and sisters, do you want to be in Christ's kingdom which will continue forever where there is no death and old age and suffering and pain and sickness? If it is your decision to follow Christ, come what may because Satan is using several powers several kingdoms, several kings, several uh, 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 people in power. Satan uses uh, people in the hierarchy. Satan used kings. Satan used queens. Satan used governors. Satan used rich people to trouble faithful people of God. But Jesus is with you. When they were put into the fire in chapter 3, we learned Jesus was with them. Son of God was with them. When Daniel was put into the lion's den last week, we learned the angel of the Lord came to be with him, no harm done to him. Yes, we are in the last days. Again, that suffering is going to be unleashed and uh, which means we are going to have terrible time, persecution for God's people all over the world. But the assurance is Emmanuel. One of the titles of Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus will be with us. That's why Daniel chapter 12 verse 1 he says, at that time, Michael shall stand for his people. Michael is Jesus. God will stand for us. And he will deliver us from the persecution. And he will take us to heaven. He is coming soon so that we will be with him. If it is your decision, if it is your desire, join with me. I will pray for you. Before I pray, I want to thank each one of you for watching uh, this uh, program, this telecast uh, online. And also... Many of you are sharing with your friends. 
sharing with your uh, uh, colleagues, sharing with uh, some people who are far away whom you know on your uh, now Facebook or Twitter, whatever you are using or Instagram. God bless you. Continue to do that so that some people can be blessed. Some people can be blessed. That's why may the Lord bless you as we continue to grow in Christ and also sharing these important uh, Bible truths in these last days from book of Daniel. God bless all of us. Let's pray. Loving Father, we want to thank you so much for your abundant love and goodness. Bless each one of us to grow in you by learning the important spiritual truths which you have kept for us in book of Daniel, especially in uh, chapter 7 this week. And bless those who are sharing with others. Bless those who are waiting for these truths. Thank you, Jesus, for the privilege to study and uh, continue to keep us healthy and continue to keep us uh, loyal and faithful to you. Continue to enjoy your blessing and your peace until we meet again next week in 8th chapter. Lord, let your blessing and your peace be upon each one of us. Take care of all of us and our needs because I pray in Jesus' loving name. Amen. 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 My brothers and sisters, God be with you and God bless you. We'll meet you again uh, next week in our weekly Bible study in the ninth lesson. Until that time, Jesus be with us and grant his peace to us. God bless you.